John Trout, backyard gardener. Hobby orchardist, outdoor enthusiast on my 10 acres. This video would be for uh, hobby orchardist. I'm going to check some persimmon grafts. I showed some bark grafts in a previous video, and I showed also grafting this persimmon tree with whip and tongue grafts in a previous video. Uh, that's liquid fence sprayed on there. I've had a young doe, well, a mature doe and a young buck thriving on this place. But this is the graft that we did in the video. It is alive and well and growing. And all of that's been stripped away below it. I'll have to keep any growth underneath there cut out in the future. But I had put on four other grafts prior to that one. And they've all taken early golden, whip and tongue, grafted on to a native American persimmon. And this over here is John Rick. This graft up here, uh, that's a graft titled Miller, a cultivar Miller. That's the old graft from last year. I actually pruned off some of the branches off of that, some of the uh, growth off of that branch because it was so heavy at the end. It was twisting and drooping. But I'm heading up now to check these bark grafts on this American persimmon where I put in the John Rick grass. Uh, something caught my eye just the other day and well, I see why now. It's gone. Uh, let's set this down here. You see we had one graft that didn't take and that was this one. Uh, two grafts took this one and one over here. This graft is on the northeast side of this trunk. We had some very strong southwest winds the other night, some westerly winds. And look what happened. That, in the grafting world, is known as a blowout. And uh, she blew out. The graft was alive and well to that point. And here it is down here on the ground. So, that leaves us with one graft that does look very healthy at this point. And, to be honest, that's why you put in three. You keep, uh, hopefully, keep at least one. It's growing good. John Rick. Now, let me pick up my things. I never come out to this part of the orchard without Grafting tape and pruners, string. You never know what you're going to see that needs fixed up on one of these trees. Hello, Mr. Posey Pecan. Come up here through the taller grass. Mr. Pecan ceiling, you'll be grafted next year. All the way up. To this chestnut. Oh boy, this chestnut tree grew five feet last year. You can see this stick. It grew five feet thereabouts last year. Started out this spring, completely died back to the ground, and this is what's grown out. Now, this is not a grafted variety of chestnut by any means. I will graft it next year and hopefully get it to take with one of the only two cultivars I have. This one here being uh, Ching, I believe it's called. This one over here. Where are you? There you are. That's Eaton River. Chestnuts. It's important to keep at least three varieties in case one would die. You've got a pollinator for the others. But what I'm gonna do is take this new growth and wrap it to this 
um, old growth here so that it won't break off in a windstorm like Mr. Persimmon did. So now, listen to some elevator music while I do a little rapping. And, okay, nice video, huh? Okay, rap, rap. Boy Scout knot, not too tight. It's gonna wanna grow a little bit yet this year. Okay, here we go. Wrapped in, free to grow. Maybe not as apt for a deer to come along and take a snip of it. Uh, that'll be a graft or a video for next year. Grafting this chestnut over to another variety. Uh, I wish I had another variety. I'm going to have to graft it to one of these, King or Eaton River. Thank you for watching.